Long ago, a Native American warrior found an eagle egg on a mountain top. He put the eagle's egg next to the eggs that a hen was going to be sitting on. When the time came, the chicks hatched, and so did the little eaglet. And he was kept warm in the same brood, and, and the tiny eaglet grew alongside the hatchlings. After some time, it learned to cackle like a chicken, to scratch the ground and look for worms. And it limited itself to flying up to the lower branches of bushes, just like the other chickens. It kept on living with the idea that, well, it was chicken. One day, after many years, when the eaglet had become an eagle, he looked up to the skies and he saw something magnificent. Up there in the bright blue sky was this majestic creature flying in the opening sky, seemingly effortlessly. The old eagle, who thought he was a chicken, was awestruck. He turned to the nearest chicken and said, what kind of bird is that? The chicken to whom he was speaking uh, looked up and answered, oh, I recognize that silhouette. That's the golden eagle, king of the skies. But don't pay any attention to him. You and I are chickens. We live down here on the ground. Come on, let's look for some worms. The eagle who thought he was a chicken never looked up again, and he died thinking he was a chicken. You and I, we, we were meant to soar. We are like the eagle who thinks he's a chicken. And Jesus, you see, is the magnificent golden eagle showing us how to fly, how to soar, and how to live. We look up and we see him on a Sunday at church or when reading the Gospels and we admire him. <coughs> and then we go back to looking for work. We fail to see that he is calling us to rise above our self-imposed limitations. We fail to see that we too are eagles, brothers and sisters to Christ, and sons and daughters of the living God. We fail to see that there's a greater purpose for our lives than eating and drinking and working and playing and enjoying ourselves. There is something more. Second Peter is so similar to First Peter. And we've been doing a series on the two letters of Peter. Second similar, Peter is so similar to First Peter that one wonders why he didn't just say, you know that letter I sent you before? Well, well, well read it again. You wonder, because it's almost word for word in places the same. But there is a distinction between the two letters. But you see in the second letter, Peter is saying that he's going to die soon. That the Roman emperor, uh, Nero, has him in his crosshair. He calls himself an eyewitness. He writes to these frightened and scared Christians in and about Rome and the provinces who are suffering because of the persecution of Nero. And he recognizes that they're frightened. And he, and, he, and he reminds them that he himself is an eyewitness to Christ. Someone who walked with Christ and someone who talked to Christ. Someone who was commissioned by Christ in this earthly life. And those of us who didn't have the privilege of meeting and sharing it with the resurrected Christ can still do so. Even though Jesus is not walking among us uh, in an earthly body. He tells us that we are not eyewitnesses, but witnesses. Not eyewitnesses, but witnesses to the presence and power of Christ, of the resurrected Christ. Remember the story of Doubting Thomas in the Gospels after the resurrection? All of the disciples were in one place except Thomas. And Jesus appeared to them and they talked, he talked with them. And he shared with them the mystery of his resurrection and of his intentions and plans for them for the future. They, they found Thomas later, and they told him what had happened, and he, he, uh, he thought they were all hallucinating, and he, he said, no, that, that didn't happen, I'll believe it when I see it. And then later, when he was with the apostles, Jesus appeared, came up to Thomas and held out his hands, 
showed him his ribbon side, invited him to stick his fingers in. Peter fell down on his face and worshiped Christ. And Jesus said, Blessed are those who have not seen, yet believe. He was talking about us, you see. Lifetime is difficult for us to believe without seeing. But faith, as the author of the book of Hebrews points out, is the substance of things sought for or longed for, and the reality of things not seen. There are things in this world that are real and cannot be seen. Does anyone in here doubt the presence and the reality of evil after, after what happened recently in Boston? Do you doubt the reality of evil? How many in here feel love in their hearts? Or feel love coming from someone? These are things you can't see and hold and touch, and yet they're very real. In the same way, God is very real. And the resurrected Christ is very real. His presence and his power in our lives are very real. Jesus said at times, you believe because you see. But blessed are those who have not seen and still believe. Peter wants us, his readers, to put our faith in Christ, the unseen Christ who moves among us as spirit. He invites us to feel the presence of Christ, to rely on the power of Christ, to see us through any circumstances in life. Some of the circumstances you are called on to face are difficult. Some of them were uninvited. Uh, some of them were really hard. And some of them almost broken. And yet the presence of Christ is a reality with you, giving you strength and courage and power along the way. We, we Baptists have a, have a phrase for that. We call, it, we call it the mystical presence of Christ. Now the bodily Jesus is not standing here, but he's here just to say, where he said, wherever two or three of you are you gathered together, there will, I will be also. We recognize his presence with us, and the power that has seen us through situations in the past. Things we've had to face that were tough, that were hard. And yet we knew we were drawing from a divine, transcendent power. Something we didn't have that helped us and strengthened us. That gave us courage and hope and faith to move forward. We don't need Jesus walking around in the flesh. Do we? we don't need him walking around in the flesh. In his first letter, Peter said that Jesus was buried according to the flesh, but raised in the spirit. <laughs> You don't need Jesus walking around. There's 2.2 billion Christians in the world. 2.2. Uh, I think it's a little, a little liberal because they're counting some groups uh, uh, <laughs> kind of horrible. But uh, certainly two billion Christians in the world. Two billion. If Jesus were here bodily, how would two billion Christians have the opportunity to talk to him? To, to, to hear from him personally? How many would be able to do that in their lifetime? You wait in your whole life and not be able to talk to them, communicate with them. Uh, we can, we can, because Jesus is in the Spirit. He was raised in the Spirit of the people. And it is the Spirit of Jesus among us, above us, within us, around us, below us, that confirms our faith, comforts our hearts, and shows us how to soar. We have been taught that we are chickens. We root around in this life trying to get what we need and what we want. We're busy looking for worms. Peter is telling us to look up and see Jesus. He's right here with you. He's right here with you. And he's, 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 he's making his presence known to you in the events of your life and in the strength that you feel that comes from outside of you. It gives you hope and purpose and direction. Peter is telling us, we don't just see him, we believe him, and we believe in him. We welcome his teachings in our daily lives, we embrace Christ daily to be embraced by his spirit. Right now. It's, it's not a, it's right now. The old time Baptist used to say, once saved, always saved. No, I'm not sure that's right. I think the Methodist guy has got it on the side. 
I think, I think the Methodists are right. You have to be saved every day. Every single day, you give your heart to Christ. Every single day, you embrace Christ in your heart and in your life. I think faith is a continuing and ongoing thing, not just once for all, but every day of your life. Spread your wings. Huh? Fly with him. He will show you how to live an abundant, rewarding life. He will show you how to love God and how to love your neighbor. How to love yourself for that matter. How to forgive yourself. Yeah. And how to rely on your Heavenly Father for the strength, comfort, and courage that you need. We are not chickens. We're eagles. <laughs> Meant to soar majestically and live according to our true nature as the sons and daughters of the living God. Amen. 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 Pray with me. Gracious God. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We admit our sin. We limit ourselves by our lack of humanity. We cripple ourselves in believing that we are ordinary. Open our eyes. Wake us up. Touch our hearts. Heal our brokenness. Inspire us to love and serve Christ by loving and serving others. May the compassion of Christ heal our wounds. May the forgiveness of Christ enable us to put pain, sorrow, and the memories of the past wrongs behind us. May we have the courage to say goodbye to that which holds us back from trusting you and loving you and living as you taught. May we humbly submit to your divine command to love and to forgive in the same way that we have been loved and forgiven. Take away our chicken attitudes. Give us the courage of faith. Please stand and join me in a final hymn.